my wonderful friends. Oh, how are you? If you are out there tonight, hope it's Sonia with Jug Monkey Paint Company. Whoa, what a day we had here. It got up to today when I was making my last run of Happy Meal. It got up to 91 degrees here, which I will take it. I love it. It's been a very sweaty kind of day. And tonight, me and Matt went outside and we were doing some more yard work tonight, got some more raking done. So little bit by little bit, the yard is looking good. So we're gonna keep at it and just really just make it beautiful. So if you, if this broadcast is working, say hello as you pop on, guys. Hopefully you're not sweating like me. Hey, Shirley, how are you? Amy's on here. So I thought tonight we would go ahead, I don't know how many days we've been doing our milk paint challenge for now. Maybe somebody might be able to tell me, <laughs> tell me. Um, but we are working our way through the 10 new milk paint uh, colors that we just launched this past week. And I'm getting projects done around my house, so which is really, really good. I'm making use of all the stuff that I've collected over the last couple months and getting to it. So who remembers when I flipped one of the spare rooms in my house here and I did it in a cactus theme. Do you guys remember that? I found, which I'm going to be so sad when Pier 1 completely closes, um, because I found, do you remember that? That was like one of my favorite finds of all. I got that giant, what was it, like a, almost a $200 giant cactus print painting and uh, it's hung above, above the bedroom in there. That was my favorite ones. Hey, Chris, how are you? Oh, we're on day eight. Thank you very much, Amy. So tonight we're gonna use a fun color called pistachio. Okay, do you guys like pistachios? Tell me if you do or if you don't. I think my favorite, if I'm like doing trail mix and stuff like that, I just love the almonds. I tend to be the person who eats a lot of the almonds out of the pack, but pistachios, be so sad when it goes away because I got some really good stuff on clearance there you know I'd pick over the clearance aisle I got oh I'm guessing we're gonna so that right here oh, that we did last night right here this color right here is called sweet pea can you guys see me okay oh no guys I'm froze Let's see if it will reconnect for you Matt just ran in and told me that it's frozen as well oh it's working okay it doesn't give Sam it's really weird how it's been yeah Amy says I keep buffering. Kitty says I keep freezing. Yeah, I keep buffering. Oh. You might want to try to restart. I might restart. Give me a minute and see if it works itself out. So can you, you guys see the difference right here in the color? This is the pistachio, and then this is the one we used last night. And then don't forget that we also have another one that we added to the milk paint line, and this one oh, is called Spearmint. So do you see the three greens right there now that they're all dried? So we're going to go ahead and use this one right here tonight. And I thought that it would be cool. This piece behind me, this is a piece I got when I was out thrifting and junkin, and I paid $2.99 for it right here. How I miss picking those little tabs off. Oh good, Penny says it seems to be better now. Maybe it worked itself out. Go figure. Come on, work with me, YouTube. So this one here I got for $2.99, and I'm guessing, hey, if you've bought one of these before, this, this kind of looks like something you'd see at Pier 1, all right? But um, it's like a wicker, and I'm guessing, I'm going to say it's like a wicker. I'm guessing it's a candle holder, all right? So I figured I could go ahead. You like the pistachio best? Nice. I'm going to go ahead, I think, and put this in the cactus room um, with a candle, like a nice chunky candle on the top of it. But it's got to go from this, I don't know, I just want to update it with some color. Plus, it's going to sit on those dark stained floors in that room. So I, I'm ready for a pop of color, and I got some artwork in there that has greens into it. I think this will be the perfect color. So I'm going to go ahead and it's, I have a little bit less than one quarter of a cup right here in my um, Palm Bay, Florida. Oh, that sounds good, Sophia. So less than a quarter of a cup. We put our powder into our little container. We grab the same amount of just water that is room temperature. And we put that in right like that. All right. And then we mix it up just like that. You like the A lot of you guys love the a color we used to have before and we retired it. And this color is very similar that we brought out in the milk paint. Do you guys remember the color Ice Ice Baby? Every time, every time if you use that color, we used to always do it in Drive Matte Nuts. You guys remember? that the difference between our clay and mineral type paint and the milk paint cat would be that it's pre-mixed, all right? It is the grab a brush and go banana, so you just open the lid, you stir and you go. 
and it sticks to pretty much anything under the sun. Whereas Miss Petunia, she is the wild monkey that loves to chip and flake over glossy surfaces. So you're gonna see her at work here tonight on this piece behind me, and I have a feeling I'm gonna see some chippiness happen because it's a, I don't know what this is made out of. It's like, it's like glossy reeds. What do you call this stuff? Now, what do you call this stuff? Wicker? I don't know. What's it? Somebody has a good name on it out there. Rattan. Rattan? Is that what it is? Actually, that sounds right. Yes. You guys tell me. I just pick up stuff that I'm like, ooh, that could work. I don't care what color it is, you know? I just do my own thing. So you would use the milk paint when you want a chippy, um, just flaky kind of look. That's when I use the milk paint. And then I use the other line of paint when I want it to do what it's told and stick to, like I said, pretty much anything under the sun, right? Look at this pretty color. Ooh, and now I want like pudding or something. This is making me hungry. <laughs> Uh, so I got my mixture right on tonight with like the equal parts. Last night I put a little extra water into it and just went with it um, and it was thinner. But I, this is like, I like this consistency right here of my um, milk paint, you see? And then just whisk it out and you're good to go. So we just made paint while we were working. The other thing is with the milk paint is that you're going to want to make up just um, just the amount that you're going to need for your project that day. Don't mix up a ton of it. Because it is all natural, it will spoil. So because there is milk protein in here. When you first use the milk paint, you're going to notice a smell of like a, like a milky kind of smell. But the moment it dries, it goes away. So just make up what you need for a project. Don't make up your entire package if you only need, like me, a little bit. Because, and you know what I'm thinking now? I need like, oh my gosh. Anybody else love mint chocolate? Oh, this looks so good. It's making me so hungry. I just realized you guys can probably see my big blister right here on my thumb. Doesn't that look just yummy? <laughs> uh, we've been working in the yard and me and Matt have matching blisters now between our thumb and our uh, pointer finger from the raking. All right, so let's go ahead. What's that? Stanley, you're not going out. Oh, Stanley's trying to convince you to let him out? Yeah. yeah. we got to keep an eye on Stan the man because he's getting pretty brave. And last mm -hmm. night, Matt put the garbage out, and he saw a cat come across the road. And so it was Stanley. Oh, I just missed a question from Paula. Can you pull that back up for me, Matt? It disappeared Paula. on my end. Yeah, I think it was Paula Rhodes. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush and go bananas in my milk paint. And ho, ho, ho. We're gonna lather all over. So much fun. Uh, it says, I received my milk paint today. I have painted on raw wood for signs. Maybe I didn't get it thin enough, so with watering it down, it's like stain. Is that okay? Yeah, if yes, you want it to be that way. Raw wood that acts like that, you just have to go over it and it builds itself up. Yep. So, yeah. You can build up your color with your next layer is that what she means yeah because on raw wood remember the first layer always acts like it's gonna suck right in stain. yeah yep so the fact is yeah that's actually exactly how it works right good deal on raw wood oh i love it already all right can we as i get a little bit further up what are you eating brushing candy oh oh my i like this i do like this i hope that answered your question did that answer your question Sounded good to me. She'll let us know if she needs something else. Yes. Always wear your gloves. What? In the garden? I wish you had an eyes a kid on the corner. You know what? I, but I <laughs> did wear gloves. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I just must put a lot of pressure right there, right? Hey, Christine. Yep. So tonight, so then I, when I realized that, yes, I mean, yesterday, guys, we did a lot of just shoveling and raking it was so hot we spent the entire afternoon i don't know how many hours we were out there doing it but we got a lot done so now we just need to keep up on it and keep working on it right so i think i shared with you guys last night that this place sat vacant for a long time before we um, purchased the home so things have really grown in and it needs some love she wants to get a chippy look on top of that what she should do is probably um build up the layer she wants and then monkey shine it where she wants it to chip 
Yep. Power that because yep. I don't know if she can hear me from there. That sounds good. So Matt's saying that you want it to chip. So um, are you talking about chip over your wall, raw wood? Yeah, the raw wood. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Build up your base Well, she's color. already put color onto it. Yeah, and then she just waxes it, and then she gets the chippiness there. On top of it if she has a light layer? Yeah, she wants it to chip. Okay. So best bet right now is to grab your monkey shine and put a nice coat of monkey shine all over it, like I showed you the other night. And don't buff it off. And then go ahead with your next layer and see if that gives you the look that you like. But if you put milk paint straight over raw, wood. raw thirsty wood, Miss Petunia's gonna be able to get her paws in it and she's gonna hold on, right? So, but since you only got a light coat down, you could also try to sand it off a little bit and then do the same technique if you really want well, the, what I shows to be really, really light color. underneath it, right? What? If she builds up her color, Right. Are, but is she talking about a second color on top of her first color that she's got laid down? I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. So why would you build up your color and then chip it? To, well, if it's looking like a stain and she wants to color more rich, Does she want to? Well, okay. Okay. So Paula, <laughs> if you want to make your color more rich, then just build up your color. If you want it to be chippy, put a coat of monkey shine on it and then do your uh, milk paint over the top of that. And if you want a color to show through your milk paint, then obviously you want to paint with that color first, do your monkey shine, and then go ahead with your final coat. So hopefully that answers your question. She says, gotcha, gonna do that now. And if not, oh yeah, just do more coats. And if not, <laughs> All right. You have full license to be creative. Oh, I like that. I kind of didn't do full coverage on here. Like I just, I did a, this brush, if, if I put a little more onto it, I could definitely get full coverage with it. But I like a little bit of that existing brown coming through. So you can also, you know, you can also use your full coverage brush. Just use, use it sparingly with your paint to get a nice um, distressed look. I like that. Now, friends, why didn't you tell me to paint the top first? All right. It is gonna be so... Oh, Matt, is the fridge defrosted? Yep. Good deal. Listen, walking past it and seeing the bacon on the bottom shelf is making me hungry. <laughs> there we go. What are you laughing at? Uh, oh, he says. Diane, Diane Lawson says she ran through her cupboard because of the pistachio. Uh, making her hungry for pistachio. I know, right? You know what it also makes me hungry for? And, and we'll probably paint with uh, spearmint tomorrow. Uh, I love mint and chocolate. So when I see this color green, it makes me think of chocolate, mint chocolate. Like I love the peppermint patties, the junior mints. Kit can good. I've been trying to reverse right now the effects of just being in quarantine and when you've been like a shark in the <laughs> pantry. That's been us too, right? Especially earlier on. So I'm trying to reverse the, those effects and I'm trying to be really, really good. But we were at, we stopped yesterday um, at one of the stores. I think it was a gas station and we went inside and Matt's like, look, Kit Kat has a mint chocolate. Do you want one of those, right? Like, do I want, do I need? Those are two different things. So I said no, but my cheat day is coming. How are you guys doing with that whole thing? Bethany says, what kind of color are you looking for, Bethany? If you want more of a, like a pearl sort of shimmer to your paint, then you should definitely look at the um, metallic silver poly it's it very much is like a silver pearl when you finish and it's a sealer so you paint your favorite color and then you seal with the metallic um, poly you missed out I know I love those oh look at this Miss Petunia I got some cracking going on here let's see what she's gonna do so remember to get her to act up, you don't need a heat gun, but I just do this guys because we like to get a project done while we're chit chatting, right? Oh my gosh. All right. So I'm just basically helping her along. But do you see what's happening right here? 
I had you on uh, Do Not Disturb, I thought I did anyhow, but apparently it still didn't work. Do you see all that right there? Oh, I love the Andy's candies, yes. Whoa, look at that. I love working with Miss Petunia because I just never know what she's gonna do. You don't have to wonder where you're gonna put your distressing. She just does it for you. But if I didn't want her to do that, remember, that was a phone call I had come in. So that's why you, um, yep, you should definitely look at that, Bethany. Look at the metallic sealer that we have in the silver. And it will give you a beautiful shimmer, shimmery pearl effect. So if you're looking for a pearl type finish, check that out. I think you'll like it. Oh my gosh, guys, look. Look at this. Oh, she's going to be beautiful. So two ways to help Miss Petunia if you want her to not act up so much is obviously give your piece a little sand over to help open up the wood pores so she can get her paws into it and suck into it. Put that right there. And also, I could put some extra bond into my milk paint mixture. Just do whatever I did on here. I would do half of that amount to add to my paint mixture. But when I play with Miss Petunia, I let her go all out. Because if not, I'll play with pickles. You guys see that right there? Oh, she's a beauty. So are you guys feeling more confident on trying the milk paint these days? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll show you that what's going on down here. Hopefully you guys can see it. Can you see that? Like a whole bunch of chipping and cracking going on down here. Right here. Look at her in all her glory. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab, there might be still a few little wet parts, but that's okay because I'm gonna do this distressed style. So a lot of times I'll let things dry to like maybe, ooh, I don't know, 95, 98% dry, because it'll just help me with my distressing. And here we go, are you guys ready? Are you ready? I was asking a question, I don't know if you answered it or not. Okay. Uh, can you get a pearlized effect? Yep, that was Bethany. Like original, I know, told her to use. Silver. Yeah, that's exactly what I told her to use. Yep. Okay. Ooh, look at this. Oh, Miss Petunia. lot for furniture that has this chipping and cracking onto it and you can create your own cool looks it amazes me when I see a sponsored ad come up and I'm like no we ain't paying you know five hundred dollars we're getting something off of Facebook marketplace <laughs> doing it ourselves save the money for a vacation and when you do it yourself like you know when it's, it's you get the joy of doing it yourself. Yeah. You like that with the 
brown going through. Thank you, Sophia. All right, let's just make sure Miss Petunia's everything that she wants to throw a tantrum on is off. You can see with banana peel or monkey shine. All right, what do you guys think? I am in love. In love. I think she's perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our wax brush. This is made to apply your with, and these are currently in stock. Our second batch of the wax brushes are in. I should tell you, I just reminded myself that the glaze, I think I mentioned on here last night, so if you're new and you missed it, the glaze is currently open right now for pre-order to reserve yourself a can. It'll put you first in line to get it, and we will have it either towards the end of this week or early next week. Um, and then you can play and then we'll do a whole bunch of like projects with glaze and stuff. I feel like after 10 days of doing milk paint, you guys should like feel so good with the milk paint. Jarrett says went thrifting today. Um, got some candle holders. Oh, Matt always says candle holders are not safe when Sonia is around. It's true. Oh my gosh. I love this. You can really see like how rich that the wicker, the rattan looks underneath it. We're going to make it all shine. Oh, she's a beauty. Yeah, I think, I, <laughs> like, if I go out junkin' and they have candle holders, chances are I'm going to bring them home. Rita says, got my brush on order now. Oh, good. You'll love it. Just because it's made to work with your um, polish so nicely. And, yeah, when you start using it, you'll be like, ah, oh, I needed this. Sometimes you don't know, you know. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know, but when you have a wax brush like this, you will, um, it'll be your go-to thing. And they're built in the USA, made in the USA by USA families. And so thank you for supporting everyone all around. But yeah, the glaze will be here soon. So we'll play with that. I think I got it all over. You just want to make sure you get it all over and then you have plenty of time to go ahead and buff it off just to let you know because this is a wax oil finish that we do so you got plenty of time it's not going to dry get it all over your piece right now while i'm working all over it it's just sucking it in like a big old glass of water and it's been sitting in the thrift store going please somebody take me home oh this is going to be so nice so excited and now we just take a um just a clean tightly woven cloth to be able to take off the excess so all the oils and the wax is seeping into all the wood pours and the paint pours and it creates a nice resist and then we go ahead and we buff off what's on the top i always say that this is like when you blot your lips right you put your lipstick on but if you got an excess on your lips then what you do is you just kind of you know blot it off so that's what we're doing you know what? I can't wait to do a big piece of furniture in this color. I think it comp complements the brown, especially this red brown, so nice. Can you imagine like if I did an old buffet in this color and let it chip and do all this craziness? Oh, that would be beautiful. The yummy chippiness. Gotta love it. I don't know if this color is still in stock. We are working on a milk paint restock behind the scenes because it's been flying off the shelves. Neptune went out like in two days. You like that, Linda? Isn't that funny? And this is why you use Miss Petunia. You can use her on raw wood and she'll sit down and, you know, like I said, she can suck into raw wood and she's beautiful for signs. But if you want chippiness, put the uh, monkey shine underneath or let her go on top of just something shiny. So for example, if you love this look and you want to do some really cool old weathered signs, what I would do is, you know, get your wood this color right here and then do your layer of monkey shine and then do your layer of Miss Petunia over the top and you can imitate this look on anything. All right, there we go. Let me get some of the paint chips out that fell inside. I had to stick my Swiffer down in there. Perfect. Is that Riley? 
Hey, bud, there's some meatloaf left there if you want some. I made meatloaf for supper tonight. I was so happy. If I had <laughs> it's like 91 degrees and Sonia's making meatloaf. Well, I kind of had taken the meat out and I needed to, you know, to make it into something. And so I thought, why not make meatloaf? And I did something tonight. I, poured, I put pork rinds into my meatloaf with like onions and peppers. And um, I also chopped up a bunch of bacon into it. And I wrapped some bacon around. Boy, was it good. It came out so crispy and so good. Some garlic powder, onion powder. What do you guys have for some supper? I just love that. Love it. So this is going to go in the corner. And I'll probably get a nice, fresh, white, chunky candle for the top. And just to let you know that this was the other green, so you kind of see the difference between them. Oh, pulled pork. That sounds really good, Dakota. I won't tell Matt you said that because he's going to want me to make that now. Yep, and those were the colors right there. So, chicken and rice. Yum. Yum. Food is so good. Can you stay there? Um, yeah, let me show you the colors again. So we got this one is, so this color sample that we did together matches over here. I feel like I'm on the price is right, right? And then Bob says, which color goes where? What, what price tag goes where? And then this was this color right here. It's nice when you're able to see the colors on something else, you know, so you can really start to envision them. I can't wait to do them on some bigger pieces of furniture when I can get out and buy some big pieces of furniture. And then this is this one right here. You made spaghetti carrot. Carabana, is that what is it? Is that what it's called? Carabana? That sounds good. That's got bacon into it, right? And listen, anything with bacon in, just call me up, I'll be over, all right? That sounds really good. So tomorrow we might do something with this color here. I just gotta think about a piece that I have and where I'll put it, and then I'll pick the appropriate piece. So thanks guys for hanging out. Hopefully you um, enjoyed some company, enjoyed a little transformation, maybe give you some ideas. It's fun just seeing Miss Petunia do her thing, right? Let's see here. Mary says she did a piece of Elevy more. I didn't need to wait before I use it for a printer. Um, I would just make sure, give it before you like you put something on it so it doesn't stick to it. Believe it or not, when you paint something, it actually is curing for up to 30 days behind the scenes. That's wood is like a sponge, and even though it gets dry to the touch, what's that? You just hurt my ears. Okay, why? Because I said pulled pork? Carbonara. How, what did I say? Carbonara. I don't know. That's why. <laughs> well, you should have stayed Carter there, Mr. Yeah. Chef, and help me out. All right. Isn't that the bacon it. creamy sauce? Yes. I feel like it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, you know, spinach, bacon. That sounds very good. Remember, I used spinach, bacon, Yes, yes, yes. Sauce. Just yes. big check mark next to my name. All the above. Me. Look at me. Carbonara. Carbonara. Everybody say it out loud. Carbonara. Yeah, so carbonara. everything cures up to 30 days behind the scenes, but it dries to the touch, you know, especially pretty much in 24 to 48 hours. So I would at least let a couple days go by before you put your printer on top of it so it doesn't start to suck in your printer feet or anything else into it, right? Sometimes when I do my furniture, I'll put something underneath things as well if it's heavy, um, kind of like a coaster just to hold it up a little bit so it's not fully stuck on, right? Something that I just painted. Rashonda says, Matt would have been so proud. She also added green peas. I think you went back upstairs. That would be good together. Mary says, oh, you've been waiting. It's, oh, good grief. Go use it, Mary. You're good to go now. Yeah, just a couple days. Just a couple days if you have something big to stick onto it, right? Yeah, you are good to go, my friend. All right, and we are good to go. Thanks for hanging out for another project. I'll be back again tomorrow evening and we'll do something else fun. So hopefully your evening is wonderful, cool, and just relaxing. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. See you, Elvia.